Aloha and welcome to Island Connections. I'm Rahim Aude. Mauna Kea Ea, the topic for today. And we have uh, uh, professors from uh, United, uh, University of Hawaii, Manoa. Um, we start with uh, Noelani Goodyear Kaupua. She's the department chair and professor of uh, political science. Daviana Pomakai McGregor, she's professor of ethnic studies, also director of Center for Oral History in Ethnic Studies. Candice Fujikani, professor of English. And Tai Tengan, department chair of ethnic studies, and uh, also with uh, ethnic studies and anthropology. Uh, thank you all for coming over. And uh, <coughs> chose this uh, title, Mauna Kea Ea, because uh, the, it seems to me the entire uh, notion uh, about Mauna Kea is not only Mauna Kea, but it's sovereignty and freedom and uh, <coughs> the uh, uh, self-determination for the Kanaka Oivi. So I wonder first if you agree with this, one, and two, briefly, uh, you know, there are multiple uh, <coughs> uh, you know, versions of what's happening on Mauna Kea and what the whole struggle is about. So briefly, what is your, um, you know, idea about that and why um, have you been participating with it? Of course, all these things come together. We start with Tai, since uh, you are right here. <laughs> uh, all right, thanks. Um, you know, I, I would fully agree that this is really about the broader issue of AI and the, the resurgence of it, uh, building on former struggles for Ea um, over the last um, couple of generations at least and, and reaching back even to the, the turn of uh, at the end of the 19th century and 20th century. Um, so this is a, in many ways a, a culmination, a peak if you will, of movements for Ea which as you know is sovereignty, it's also life, breath, um, it's also implying a kind of rising action. Um, and you see really all of that in the, the movement to protect the Mauna. Um, and the way that it's spread out across the, the Pai Aina of Hawaii, the archipelago, but also beyond that into uh, Oceania and really across the world. So yes, very much mm -hmm. about Ea and some of its, I think, transformations um, in, in the focus of the Mauna. Yeah. So like Candace, uh, you're not Kanaka Oivi, I'm not Kanaka Oivi, but uh, here we are in support. So what uh, um, propelled you to do that, uh, you know, in terms of your history and all of that? Right. So um, I think that in terms of Ea, there's this kind of um, uh, working towards articulating what is the Laui. Who is a part of the Laui? And um, my kumu, uh, Kaliko Baker, he says, Laui is not defined by race. Laui has to, the Laui has to do with people who are committed to the independence of Hawaii. And so I see that that is a very impar important part of this movement, which has been very inclusive, very welcoming. Um, and there's this question of whose laws are being um, talked about here. And um, there was a message that went out from the Matsunaga Peace Institute saying that um, the Kia'i are breaking the laws, but whose laws? Definitely, I, I think that um, in, the, in this movement to protect Mauna Wakea, Kanaka Maoli are asserting the preeminence of the laws of the Akua over the laws of men, and that's a very important part of the, of the work for Ea. Yeah, Dariana. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I think Mauna Wakea, and especially the whole approach to foreground the, the sacredness of Mauna Kea and to uphold and uplift uh, its, its majesty, um, is, is really a combination of uh, generations of seeking to reclaim our soul as Native Hawaiians, beginning with the Protect Kolabi Ohana movement and working in close conjunction with the Edith Kanaka Ole Foundation. And the Edith Kanaka Ole Foundation um, gave us um, ceremonies and protocols that began to be part of our lives to call back our Akua, uh, Lono, 
and um, Haumea and Kane and Kanaloa especially um, into our lives. And uh, they too have been very much a part of uh, training a new, new generations, probably two more generations, there's been about three generations of training, um, both in Aloha Aina and the protection of our land and our rights as, of self-governance as a people, as well as in the ceremonies and beliefs and customs and practices of being a Kanaka and honoring our, our Aina and, and our ancestors. And so you can see that this comes together in Mauna Kea. It's, it, with the um, Kapu Aloha that um, embraces the whole movement uh, and, uh, and also uplifts it at the same time. And the ceremonies that guide it, um, it, it's, it is such an important movement that um, for the government to respond with brutality and violence would be so inappropriate and, and such an act of war against Native Hawaiians and Kanako Iwi to, to, to lash out against peaceful people engaged in ceremony and, and belief and practice. Um, and for what? You know, so that a, a third, you know, a million, 30, a meter telescope can be built and, and when it could certainly be built anywhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, they say we have to share the Mauna. We've been sharing the Mauna. Now they're just wanting to take over the Mauna and, and exclude us and totally, um, you know, um, suppress our, our, our beliefs and customs and practices. Yeah. Uh, are you done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I think uh, the spiritual um, aspect of, whole, uh, of this whole thing is uh, rather important beyond its spirituality. Uh, but we will talk uh, more about that uh, later. But uh, no way your ideas about the first question. <clears throat> well, I agree with everything that the other, other panelists have already said, and I think I would just add that um, to piggyback on what Kumu Deviana said, you know, the movement that we see here, it's historic in terms of its size and its reach, um, and it's a testament to the amount of energy and effort that um, has been put into Hawaiian education both in formal spaces like schools and halau, as well as more informal spaces in communities and families. And, um, you know, I think it's really amazing and incredible that over the last 50 years or so, our, our movement has invested more than anything into education and, and um, reclaiming our histories and our mo'olelo and our practices. and. It's a beautiful thing to see um, that fruiting at this moment, you know. Um, kind of coming back to the couple aloha thing as well. I was sharing in a panel that we were just on of, uh, last week that my um, first introduction to couple aloha was when um, we had taken a group of high school students from Halau Kumana to visit Kanoka Aina, and they were put under this kapu aloha that they had to aloha one another and um, see past any perceived differences because they're representing different schools or whatnot. And um, they're now the generation of young leaders at, at the movement, you know, at, at the Pu'uhonua, these students, um, graduates of these, these schools. Um, and I know there's a longer genealogy to kapu aloha that others may be interested in sharing, but... Yeah. <clears throat> It's yeah. one of the really powerful things that has been coming out of yeah. this movement. Good. Um, so, uh, the, you know, I mean, you want to say something more about uh, that? I, I would, yeah, totally, you know, affirm what Noi had mentioned with the, the power of Kapu Aloha, which um, is, again, something that was, it was voiced by uh, Deviana and Candice about the centrality of spirituality. My own introduction was through um, the Hale Mua Hawaiian Men's Group that um, were regular participants at the Pu'ukohola Heiau ceremonies. And it was there when I was first introduced to Kapu Aloha um, as a proclamation made by Kumu John Kiola Lake um, at the beginning of the ceremonies. And it was to extend this aloha to the other participants, which was particularly important, I think, for some of the groups that were there representing those aspects of Nakoa, um, the warrior or the, the courageous ones who 
would be engaged in mock battles that would sometimes go over the edge. And so I think in order to control a lot of those energies, especially as they revolved around Ku mm -hmm. at that site of Pu Kohola, really required a different kind of kapu. And being there required kapu, but it was the question of what is the nature of this kapu. Um, and I think this extends forward in, in its transformations in relation to another coup, that of coup kia imauna, both the, this call to stand in protection that has also become uh, materialized in an actual mm -hmm. ki, an actual akua form that mm -hmm. represents these energies that are being put into the, the protection of Mauna Wakea, which again goes backwards, I know, to another genealogy, to Kanaloa and to Koho'olawe. Um, though for me, the my first introduction was there at, at Pu'u Kohola and seeing that that grow and, and then learning more about how the, there's this deeper history with Kanaloa Koho'olawe is has really been important to make those kinds of genealogical connections and to imagine what's going to come after that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have uh, here, uh, <clears throat> you know, one website, uh, the Pu'uhonua, Pu'uhuluhulu, uh, dot com, yeah, so uh, I'm just going to show like certain things there, like in terms of support. You can donate, um, <clears throat> you know, then, uh, you know, Mauna Kea petition, registry, support events, and all of that. So I encourage people to go to puhuluhulu.com and look at it and see how might they be able to support or at least learn from that. You can contact uh, media, press, etc. And then uh, here the learn one is uh, rather interesting. Here we can show uh, <clears throat> what happens, you know, or what can you uh, learn about uh, what's going on, you know, from uh, <clears throat> who are the allies, 50 years of mismanaging Mauna Kea, right? <clears throat> you mentioned, uh, no way, 50 years of the entire um, struggle, uh, but also like uh, mismanagement of Mauna Kea. So it is like a matter of um, it's been happening <laughs> for a long time and nobody cared. You know, and I think this is rather important. And then there are questions about uh, Mauna Kea, who, uh, who, whose answer might surprise you, and so, so forth, and then the OHA lawsuit and all of that. So these are some of the uh, like resources <laughs> that you can uh, go to with the uh, uh, dot com. Uh, so I think uh, that's important. Um, yeah, I just uh, want to ask like a general question. Did you all go to the Mauna? Yeah, did you all visit the Mauna? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's, uh, so you want to talk about your experiences there, perhaps, uh, Candice? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so um, I flew up uh, on the Friday where there was a meeting at Pukohola, mm -hmm. and um, it was the first night, and uh, at that point, um, Kaho'oka, he asked for volunteers to go to the Mauna, but I think people had not packed yeah. to go directly up. So there are 40 people who volunteered, so I was one of the first 40 mm -hmm. to get up there. And then the next day, so many more people showed up. But in the, in the beginning, there was a little bit of, we're kind of concerned, like, is there only 40? Mm -hmm. You know, but really, um, it was just people went home, they packed, the next day, everyone came. And it was just amazing because it's sort of an example of what can happen beyond the state? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what's um, the way that people work together, the way that they, um, they have rules there, they're very specific rules. That's why when, you know, Ige came out and said there's drinking and drugs, or like, no, there's not, because <laughs> everyone is watching everyone yeah, else. Yeah. And it was, um, it's just kind of a, there's a, a huge, that Kapu Aloha is also about bringing people into alignment with the Akua. And, and I first heard it in uh, 2011, and, and that's when I joined into that this fight. And Kealoha Pishiora was talking about how Kapu Aloha moves action. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what you see at the Puhonua is people organizing university classes, mm -hmm. you know, people mm -hmm. thinking about how to bring people together and then do something while people are there. Yeah. Um, actually, before like uh, I ask you about your uh, particular experiences, I want to inject this thing that uh, uh, what surprised um, the state, shall we say, uh, was the like uh, just the flood of mm -hmm. support, uh, mm -hmm. and not only here, but as Ty was talking about Oceania, 
uh, mm -hmm. and so on. So there were like uh, the delegations from other areas, Tonga, Fuji, I, mean, uh, mm -hmm. I hear. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I know from Kat, uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, but uh, the other thing uh, that uh, <coughs> surprised the people, not, uh, not only the state, but people, also this kind of flood of support, etc. Uh, what uh, the, the way they have, uh, I mean, the state and people like this guy who wrote uh, this thing about breaking the law. Oh, Brian Hallett. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, Brian. Yeah, I didn't want to mention his name, oh. but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, they are missing the point. And of course, you can see how like they are organized to counter right. this thing. Even like some uh, Kanaka or Evie, yeah. you know, um, I know a few of them uh, who are like um, professionals, but not only professionals. They are completely against this. The, the thing is, uh, to me, uh, and this is what we want to discuss after you talk about your experiences there, is uh, why is it that uh, this onslaught against this kind of movement, which is, to me, movement for AI, and we can talk about this, uh, you know, what I think about it and what you guys think about it beyond what uh, Ty was mentioning. But I think this is uh, important to discuss, you know, uh, this kind of uh, <clears throat> um, surprise from the state and other people. And also, in fact, uh, some of the people, like you mentioned, you were 40 and all of a sudden there were more. You were 7, surprised. 40 <laughs> to 7,000. Yeah, you were surprised too. Mm. So, I mean, it's important to talk about why that is uh, so, you know, and what it means <clears throat> given uh, the situation, global situation, etc. But that's later on. But what about your experiences? Well, yeah. I was there on the first day too. Yeah, um, yeah so I, <coughs> I've been there now <coughs> to the Puuhonua three, three times, three different times. I, I arrived the first time on um, July 14th, which is the Sunday before the first mm -hmm. um, engagements with law enforcement. And that was a day of Pule. We prayed every hour on the hour. Um, and that was intended to get everyone in the right, you know, space and frame of mind and be grounded. <coughs> um, and like Candace was saying, there were a few hundred people, I think, there at that by that point. Mm -hmm. And um, one tent, one twenty by twenty tent. Um, and it was an intense few days because there were several days of um, engagement with law enforcement before you know, the state of emergency was declared by Ige and then mm -hmm. um, then s slowly that there was sort of the standoff that we've mm -hmm. now been in for several weeks. Um, so I could talk about that later, but mm -hmm. I think what I want to emphasize is then the next time I went back to the Pu'uonua, which was in early August, mm -hmm. it had grown <laughs> tremendously. There was Kanaka Uber, there was, you know, <laughs> Kanaka Costco, there was a free food line for, mm -hmm. for everyone. Um, round the care medical, <coughs> round the clock medical care for mm -hmm. Kupuna and others, you know, who may need it by the Mauna medics. Um, <clears throat> and then when I went this last time um, over the Labor Day weekend, uh, what really struck me was the development of the protocols where people were really invited in to participate in mm -hmm. certain hula and oli that were, were sort of noa, and then others that were really for like the trained dancers and practitioners. Um, so I think what I want to say about that is that, you know, for people who are on the pro TMT side, but who are just completely writing off the Pu'uhonua and the movement as um, lawless and, you know, sort of without value or lazy protesters or, you know, the various ways that they're stereotyped. I think that those folks are missing out on like a huge um, valuable and hopeful um, thing that's being created there that is about Mauna Kea, but it also is beyond, right? I mean, like these, a community has been pulled up out of the ground that is giving free medical care, that is built on abundance, that's built on reciprocity, that's inclusive and yet holds people accountable for the different kinds of kuleana they have. It's truly amazing. I mean, people are sacrificing so much to give so much to others um, that I think if people can't see the value in that, it's it's a huge blind spot on their part to, to see the kind of 
alternatives to the dominant society that we're living in that is, you know, destroying the planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you want to say something, David, on that? Oh. On, uh, <laughs> on your experience? Oh, or, yeah. well, um, uh, I remember being glued to Kanai uh, Okana when, on the first day when she was, um, we were what, chained, chained to the, the, the cattle guard. And, and then it just broke my heart when I saw that uh, Polani Kanaka Ole Kanaheli was arrested and Moana Busby Neff. And so our, you know, for, as Pachekalavi Ohana, we've been, we've been represented through our, our kumu and um, oh, 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 Hawaii Island kua mm -hmm. and waiting for the call. And so it, the call came out to go to the Mauna and to um, make a whole kupu mm -hmm. and to connect our Mauna on Kohalabe with the Mauna Awakea. And so we went up to um, bring our hokupu. At the same time, we had ohana that were on uh, Kolabe at Mo'ula'iki at noon as well, and um, made our, our, our prayers and connected and, and asking for that release of the mountain from this, um, mm -hmm. this uh, development that's yeah. really going to destroy yeah. um, and, and upset really the whole, mm -hmm. could potentially upset the whole ecosystem yeah. of Hawaii yeah. Island. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, uh, I look at it, you know, uh, observing it uh, all. I see, um, and having studied like Hawaii's uh, contemporary history and so on, and especially the movement, people's movement in Hawaii at the center of which is the uh, Kanaka Maoli um, movement. Uh, and I see that this is a qualitative uh, shift mm -hmm. in the struggle for AR, you know. Uh, People don't see it that way. But one uh, reason I see it that way too is, uh, it seems to me, it's not like uh, in the open yet, but uh, Noe was talking about like free medical care and this and that, and people are responsible for, <coughs> you know, uh, will be ans uh, answerable for their kuleana and all of that. Um, there is a class aspect to this, it seems to me. You know, a class aspect to this. Um, because <clears throat> you see, like, uh, um, uh, you know, I mean, uh, there are professors, you know, they're not from the poor class, so to speak, but there are professors who are supporting it, etc. But uh, because of their, like, I ideology, outlook, uh, you know, like cosmology, etc., is different from that of those who are against it and who are, in one sense, in one way or another, benefiting from the system as is. And therefore, anything that uh, is, quote unquote, unlawful would be condemned and so forth. So uh, any ideas about about that, Ty? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I would fully agree with that point about the, the reach being much uh, broader across class differences and, and unifying across those differences. Um, I, I think part of that you can account for in something that Daviana alluded to is the, the widespread social media presence and coverage that invites people to engage in, in all of these different aspects of Ea in ways that they hadn't before. Mm -hmm. I mean, being able to watch the ceremonies three times a day, get, getting the updates, mm -hmm. being able to direct their own ceremonies mm -hmm. wherever they are and to also organize really mm -hmm. wherever they are. Mm -hmm. And just this weekend, I was part of, again, one of these, I think, really well-organized um, events, the Kia'i Convoy mm -hmm. that, yeah. that took place that yeah. was organized from in, in a really interesting sort of class <laughs> remapping a right. uh, convoy that started in in uh, what's now called Hawaii Kai or uh -huh. Mauna Lua, um, you know, typically yeah. seen as, as, you know, the homes of the, the wealthy and, mm -hmm. and powerful, um, driving across the island and then ending at, at Ma'ili in Waianae. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Again, typically kind of characterized, stereotyped mm -hmm. as poor and Hawaiian. But I think it, it's to flip some of those mm -hmm. conventions on its head and to draw new connections between Kanaka and allies across mm -hmm. the island, mm -hmm. um, but also to really have a really powerful visual performance of, of kapu, of aloha, of kia'i, um, 
from from a wide range of different positions. And mm -hmm. you know, you'd see the big one of my best uh, images. I can maybe bring this up later. Was mm -hmm. when we were waiting in Mount Alua. Um, you hear this huge horn honking, and there's this huge truck that's coming with all the flags, and they they painted the whole truck with the Hawaiian <laughs> flag. And it was this Ohana concrete pumping, you know, mm. it's a construction <laughs> truck that just decked out in the flags. And, you know, if you want to see a real visual materialization of building the nation, yeah. nothing better than a construction yeah. truck coming in with the flags <laughs> waving. Yeah. But, you know, that, that was, I think, um, one of those differences mm. that mm. we've seen here mm. with what's happening um, around Mauna Kea mm -hmm. and the efforts to Kia'i. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Candice, uh, you have like a PowerPoint here with a few uh, pictures or several pictures. Okay. So we can uh, like show them and we can go over them oh, uh, or okay. uh, over a couple <coughs> of them. We stopped yeah, yeah, your question sure, about trucks sure. though because yeah. what's interesting is there's a huge Waianae contingency there. There's mm -hmm. always the Waianae folks there. And it's because in Waianae, they're fighting against the expansion of landfills. They're working classes who see how uh, these corporations, these multinational corporations, these LLCs are profiting off of their, the land where they live. Mm -hmm. And they are stuck <coughs> with these environmental injustice hotspots mm -hmm. that have a direct impact on their health mm -hmm. and on their children's health. So I think in terms of class, what we see it at the Pu'uhonua is a coming together of all the people who are fighting in land struggles all over Hawaii, yeah. whether it's about <clears throat> PVT landfill or it's about sand mining on Maui mm -hmm. or it's about um, action on Kauai. All of these things are happening and, and that's why I think the class element is so mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also the way in which it's it's a critique of capital, mm -hmm. right? That the people who the are TMT there... The TMT is <clears throat> a critique of capital, but right. anyway. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And the most, Im and I wanted to say, the most important people at the Pu'uhonu are the guys who come in and clean the toilet. Mm -hmm. And we just have this, because you live so close to the elements, you have this real respect for the people who take care of mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. 30 porta potties, yeah. you know, and yeah. then without that, I don't think it could fly. Yeah. You know, yeah. really um, hard. I, I want to say something general. Yeah. Uh, you know, national struggles yeah. um, have a particular um, feature to it, which is like all classes, uh, yeah. you know, combined to struggle against right. it. But <clears throat> the problem, given uh, you know the past say hundred years or so, who is particip You know, who is in the leadership of the struggle? Yeah. If you leave it to the <clears throat> bourgeoisie or the <laughs> capitalist or people who are benefiting from that is going to go down the tubes. But if you uh, have like, uh, you know, a class perspective, which is, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, um, uh, the new class forming, yeah. you know, in uh, capitalism right. at this point, you right. see, that is uh, like contingent 20 mm -hmm. hours a, uh, a week, you know, uh, who were working for 50 bucks an hour and now they're working for 10 bucks an hour. All these kinds of things, you see them unemployed, you know, mm -hmm. permanently unemployed, etc. They are, you know, uh, uh, you know, by uh, <coughs> nature of the development of capital at this point, they are beginning to form a particular class. Mm -hmm. We see them in Hawaii, everywhere, in Chicago, everywhere. So I just wanted to say, like, the feature, the main feature of national struggles is multi-class, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but at the same time, who should be leading the struggle? Or if you wanted to win, which class or which uh, interest, of, uh, the interest of which class are paramount in mm -hmm. terms of the leadership <coughs> that is dealing with the situation? I think this right. is critical, um, but I don't know what you think about these things. Any? Well, I, I think it also gets reflected within, you know, our, our own Ohana, where mm -hmm our ohana are being divided or trying to deal with these dilemmas. I, I just, you know, found out m one of my cousins is an iron worker and he worked on, you know, the Haleakala telescope. And so yeah. he was saying, he, he, I just met him. He had someone that I've been, dis uh, you know, separated from for a long time. And it was his, actually his sister's um, whole leva. And I met him and I, and he said, oh, I want to talk to you. Can we, can we talk some more? I want to learn about what you folks, mm. you know, are doing, mm. what you're, mm. you know, what, why, why you folks are opposing it. And, 
you know, trying to, I think, understand what, what his role is, mm -hmm. you know, in the future mm -hmm. there. Um, but we have, you know, families on either side that mm -hmm. want to go. I have another mm -hmm. cousin who just loves going up to the Pu'u Ohonoa. She goes up every day. <laughs> she says, I don't like to go in classrooms, but I love yeah. this Pu'u Ohonoa, you know. Yeah. And so, it, it, you know, it, 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 yeah, it, it, it has led, for, uh, led us to, within our families, begin mm -hmm. to reassess and, yeah. and to, you know, see where we're going to go forward yeah. on this yeah. as a family. And, uh, so, uh, yeah. and part of, uh, you know, this class thing is the immediate interest of the people concerned. You see, like, hard hats for construction, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, the uh, rail system or whatever, they are for it. So that's their immediate interest. But I'm talking about those people who are being created by, as a class, mm -hmm. created by this uh, onslaught of capital at this point, you know, which I mentioned before, no need to uh, deal with again. But uh, so we can, uh, any ideas about this, Noe, or you want us I to think, go? Um, just add a couple quick things. One is that it seems to me like the, the ceremonial protocols has created a space for people to come together formally mm -hmm. around particular trades or families mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. cultural practices. Um, when we were there over the Labor Day weekend, there were at least a couple of motorcycle clubs that came mm -hmm. as motorcycle clubs and gave ho'okupu. There were healers from across the islands who came together to give ho'okupu. There have um, been instances where stevedores have come. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it, in terms of like organizing, mm -hmm. labor organizing or around other kinds of um, ways that people identify, I think that's... Um, that actually those ceremonial protocols has created a space for people to mm -hmm. say, hey, we want to go up together and we want to go up together as, you know, motorcycle mm -hmm. riders or as yeah. stevedores or not just as mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So community of practice. Yeah, community yeah. of yeah, practice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then the other thing I was going to just add to the class thing is the gender inclusivity, which I think is really important as well, mm -hmm. that we have <clears throat> a movement that is much more inclusive of leadership <clears throat> Kane wahine mahu, um, than you see in you know dominant mm -hmm. society and yeah. government is much much more diverse and representative mm -hmm. and inclusive of yeah. of all genders yeah. and um, that's part of the power as well. Yeah, all all these aspects uh, <clears throat> create something that is qualitatively different, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, the the question of uh, you know I mean <coughs> whether. Um, uh, like consciously or not, people <coughs> um, in being at the Mauna and you know supporting that struggle, etc., they are in fact uh, standing against capital. You know, mm. I mean that's uh, capitalist globalization. You mentioned like climate change and all this uh, destruction of uh, the earth and all of that. This is, I mean, happening, and so <coughs> the uh, Hawaiian struggle can teach us something. You know about that. The other thing about spirituality, you know. Uh, 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 you know, I'm not religious, but doesn't mean one cannot be uh, spiritual if they are not religious. Uh, religious, that's one thing. And uh, it, it, uh, it seems to me that um, you know some people would say, "Oh, look at the Hawaiians! You know, they're going back to their old religion, etc." To me, I look at it. Uh, what's the difference between the old religion of the Hawaiians or Christianity or Judaism or Islam? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, that's the thing. So this is cultural, you know, yeah. cultural, the spiritual uh, manifested in multiple ways, could be Buddhist, Hindu, whatever. Uh, so I, I think that is an important uh, aspect, you know, to say uh, what's wrong with uh, people claiming their culture and telling you this is my culture in your face, you know, and that's what's happening. Anybody? Well, I just want to say, I think what we're really up against is uh, you know, alliance of international capital because the investors in the um, the telescope, the international telescope observatory, rather, is are, are come from India and from China mm -hmm. and even uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. And so, in a sense, it would be great if we could also find uh, allies in those countries and those uh, at those institutions where they are, mm -hmm. or the Moore Foundation in, mm -hmm. at, at uh, Palo Alto to begin to really um, make an make a impact at that level. So I think that's, that's an aspect that we need to uh, expand upon in, in our trying to isolate what, you know, this, 
the TIO and get them to, um, you know, release the, su the, the university from this um, yeah. sublease that they have yeah. secured. Uh, but yeah, we need to build allies broader as well. Mm -hmm. And there have been actually mm -hmm. um, astronomy students from different campuses mm -hmm. who are also mm -hmm. coming out and making yeah. statements and organizing on and their own campuses too. as well. Some yes. scientists too. Some mm -hmm. scientists, yeah. Which is interesting, <laughs> you know, the scientists. Um, I, I want to show um, some uh, well, pictures, yeah, yeah. and if you like to, well, we will uh, show them <coughs> on uh, screen. Yes. Okay. So you want to start? I mean. Yeah. So this photo is um, that's Mauna Wakea, the famous shadow of the Mauna. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is in the background, and there's yeah. um, Hualalai in the front, but. Um, it's you can see the double Mauna in the foreground mm -hmm. and in the back, yeah. but that okay. shadow is yeah. yeah. This well, is the pu destruct. Yeah, kick. this is this is, uh, this is what happens when they <laughs> level a pu. Yeah, they destroy it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they uh, 1986. This mm -hmm. was pu kohola. Mm -hmm. It used to be shaped like a whale, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and they leveled it. And we know the pu are burial sites. Mm -hmm. Um, and that kind of devastation. For the TMT, they're going to remove 66,000 cubic yards of earth, which is equivalent to 1.7 uh, cubic feet. So they tell you cubic yards, so it mm. looks like a smaller number, yeah. but it's 1.7 cubic feet. Mi uh, 1.7 million? Millions. Million. 1.7 million, yeah. 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 So <laughs> Always go for the lower number. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But bigger <laughs> stick. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, very smart, those guys, but yeah. uh, they're not going to fool us, huh? No. Because we know yards, feet, and meters. But I think people don't realize how large it is, but um, was it Vicky Holt talked to me, and he said, it's going to be as large as Aloha Stadium. Yeah. And, I, you know, my, my eye doctor asked me about it, too, and when I told him it's as big as Aloha Stadium, he said, really? I didn't realize it was so big, you yeah. know? Yeah. They thought it was just like those other telescopes yeah. that are up there, but it's ginormous. Oh, <laughs> And uh, well, what are they going to do with the other telescopes? Retire them? Well, but anyway, so I heard that they want to retire some of them. But uh, be that as it may, that's not the point. The point is the TMT, you know, now and uh, the question of AI around that. Um, okay, there are other, uh, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here, you know. <clears throat> but let's see this one first. Uh, you want to mm. say something about that? So this is from the story of Kukaha Ula loving Poliahu. So Kukaha Ula is the ku of the pink tinted snow. And uh, he comes from on the first ray of the sun and he sees her and he falls in love with her. But Hina is afraid, sends the akua after him, hides her with the, the, the mists of Lilinoi. Um, he eventually um, is helped by Mo'oinanea. He's given safe passage across Vayao, Lake Vayao. And then he approaches her, and he spreads out his ahuula around her. He drapes it around her shoulders. And that's how we see Kukaha Ula loving Poliahu two times a day, mm. in the morning and at sunrise. Mm. And we always see that and remember the elemental form. So it's really the elemental form of the snow meeting the warmth of the sun, the glow of the sun, and it melts the snow. And that's what creates the waters that make Mauna Kea a pahuvai. So Kuule uh, Kanahele is um, a Papaku Makavalu uh, researcher, and she talks about the hydrology of the Mauna and how it's saturated with water. Yeah. And that's why we have to protect it, because yeah, it feeds yeah. the island. Yeah. The, the, uh, it, it seems to me like that kind of lore is like a conversation, so to speak, with nature. Yes, And the relationship exactly. between nature exactly. and Hawaiian culture right. and so forth. That can teach <coughs> this kind of system exactly. a By lot of contrast, stuff, and yeah. it uh, and it might uh, yeah. t uh, you know help save the world, the earth. <laughs> exactly, because when you that. look at what the hydrologist, yeah. how he mapped yeah. the Mauna, yeah. is just this blank space mm -hmm. because he doesn't know what's in it, mm -hmm. and the people in the Moolelo have recorded what they observed over mm -hmm. centuries, mm -hmm. intergenerational kilo. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all mapped in the Mo'olelo. Yeah, and you, that's cannot, why, yeah, you yeah. cannot trivialize all of no, that. Yeah. Um, that, uh, you know, manifests one's ignorance uh, exactly. if you tri uh, trivialize that thing and show the wisdom um, exactly. of that. And uh, moving forward, we're not going to the past. We're moving forward. Mm -hmm. That's what it tells me, you know. Even, yeah. uh, you know, that kind of lore exactly. and all of that. Yeah. 
Um, you want to say something about that? Um, so the hydrologist argues that the um, TMT cannot contaminate any groundwater because there's an impermeable kind of layering. They're perched layers and that are not going to... it's too high. It's too high. But when asked where is the groundwater, he actually said on cross-examination, he doesn't know. Oh. So how can you say it's not going to impact the groundwater when you don't you even don't know, know where, where it, it is? is. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But uh, some people say, uh, like, well, it's way down on the Mount, uh, I don't know how many. Yeah, so you yeah. can see how yeah. Vail, you yeah. see how the water goes down Pohakuloa Gulch. Yeah. Um, that action happens all over the Mount. Every pu'u traps water. So waters travel yeah. from the pu'u yeah. down to yeah. um, the But that uh, <coughs> relates to this one. Yeah, you yeah, see the I'm water, saying? the path yeah. of the water. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you can be, uh, you don't, uh, you don't have to contaminate it when it's way down there. You can contaminate it as it's moving down. <laughs> 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 anyway, yeah. so I mean, uh, I, I'm not a hydrologist, but uh, you know, yeah. logic tells me that. Um, anyway, so those kinds of things. Okay, um, you want to say something so on this? So that's the hydrologist yeah. map, okay. which is like right. blank. Yeah. You know, there's all yeah. kinds of dikes and sills in the yeah. Mauna. Okay. So dikes move water up and down, sills move water laterally mm -hmm. across the land. So mm -hmm. water can move across a mountain. So you can have a, you know, a, uh, a seepage on one side of the mountain that comes from the other side. And there's mm -hmm. all kinds of movements. They can't x-ray the Mauna. Oh, why not? Well, <laughs> get, get, get another one, so <laughs> big TMT. In yeah. that case, the but Mo'olelo is more accurate as a source of knowledge mm -hmm. than the hy hydrologist. There's no comprehensive hydrology study of the TMT site. Mm -hmm. That is the main thing. Yeah. So even if the legislators tell us it's not going to contaminate the groundwater, we can uh -huh. say there has been no comprehensive hydrological study of the TMT site. Yeah, and how do they know? I mean, you know, yeah. anyway. Yes. So uh, that's uh, you know uh, good. Now <coughs> here we are at the UH Manoa, and UH Manoa is right smack in the middle of all of this. Okay. So how do we feel about this, and what should the university do in your you know, time? <laughs> I mean, we well, know exactly sure. in, uh, in one sentence what they should do, but let's explain. I mean. Sure. Um, well, personally, and, and I think I'll probably speak for everyone else on this panel, um, you know, I stand opposed to the TMT and feel strongly that the university needs to end the that sublease mm -hmm. um, and all plans to construct mm -hmm. the 30 meter telescope and um, there are numerous reasons why um, in part laid out by Candice the mm -hmm. threat it poses mm -hmm. to the hydrology and the water um, and as many have pointed to the the desecration that it represents of a mm -hmm. sacred site mm -hmm. which I think again the some of the distinctions between science and religion or spirituality or culture, whatever you put on that other side of that false dichotomy, is indeed a false one. It, you know, our science is within our beliefs and our mo'olelo sure. and our practices. Mm -hmm. and, and to take cons to, to seriously mm -hmm. consider indigenous knowledge and to tout this university as an indigenous serving institution and Manoa specifically as the Hawaiian place of learning is to understand and, and honor the, the cultural, spiritual, religious, scientific practices that are unique to this place. And Mauna Kea is the real epitome of that. And to try to throw a telescope on there um, that is supposed to be looking backwards in time and mm -hmm. millions of miles away is, as many have pointed out, um, a major flaw because it ignores indigenous knowledge of these pasts and futures and the, the ongoing struggles right here in this place. So that's yeah. a nutshell. Yeah. Well, we still have 15 minutes, so I want to go a little bit fast uh, to cover um, a number of questions. One, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you saw the <clears throat> uh, ad on, on TV, like about how Hawaiians were all for science and this and that. and they shouldn't be now like uh, opposing the TMT because it's for humanity and knowledge and science and all that kind of stuff. So what would you say to that? Anyone? Um, Hawaiians are still for science. <laughs> 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 we have many 
Hawaiian scientists, we have Hawaiian social scientists, we have Hawaiian earth scientists, we have Hawaiian um, scientists who approach their observation and engagement with the natural world from a cultural perspective, you know, not in one of the Western disciplines. Um, so this isn't about being against science, right? Um, just to kind of connect to the some of the points that Kaviko was making earlier, I think that the university needs to um, really grapple with our role as an institution that produces knowledge and what are the eth at the ethics of that, that we're not, um, you know, a Costco or like a, some sort of a retail operation. We, I mean, we have a different kind of obligation and ethics and those of us who are in disciplines where we work with humans on a regular basis in terms of our research process, you know, I think social scientists, folks in the biomedical sciences, um, even in some of the earth sciences have had a lot more practice in thinking through the ethics of <clears throat> um, what it means to engage with the communities who you're, whom you're in, um, your research and your research infrastructure mm -hmm. impacts. And it would never be allowable to engage in social science research that has to pass human subjects review to say, you know, the process of creating the infrastructure for my research project is probably going to cause the arrest of many, many people, of indigenous people, of, you know, of anyone. I mean, it just wouldn't be allowed. Mm -hmm. So we have to push our university to continue to think about and uphold what it means to do ethical research and hold every discipline in the university yeah. accountable to that. And uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, <clears throat> to live up to its motto, a Hawaiian place of learning. I mean, okay, show it to me. You know, I'm saying, don't tell me about it. And of course, like with climate change, et cetera, et cetera, the Hawaiians, uh, Hawaiian culture can teach us a lot and move us uh, forward, it uh, seems to me. So um, uh, anyone on this uh, thing? Because yeah, I'm going to go to another. I think the university yeah. has to take a stand to protect the mountain. It has, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's the holder of the lease of the, of the Mauna. It's supposed to be protecting it as a conservation district. Um, and it should not be allowing our, our faculty and our students to be arrested. Mm -hmm. And especially if uh, it seems that they might have to even call in the National Guard, that would be an outrage to pursue scientific research, um, but having to have the, the National Guard called in in order to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the university just needs to really take a position that this is unethical and that the, 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 you know, they, they have to acknowledge that across Hawaii, every community of Native Hawaiians is coming out. It's, you know, there's never been this kind of movement since Kaho'olawe, you know, where every, on every island has come up. And they, they just have to acknowledge that they have um, poorly mismanaged this, this mountain and they have an obligation to mm -hmm. the Hawaiian people to begin to do what is right and, and to stop. The, the construction of this TMT and, yeah. and acknowledge yeah. this. Now, uh, that I want to connect it to like who the uh, universe is answerable to. Mm -hmm. um, to the <clears throat> like big uh, honchos uh, in terms of uh, wealth and power and um, capital. You know, that's, that's uh, to me, that's it, you know. So <clears throat> we have to kind of change that. And that's why that uh, whole um, Mauna Kea Ea is uh, consciously or unconsciously is against this. So the, the more, uh, the quicker we um, figure it out consciously and start to educate the people on the Mauna and supporting the Mauna about this, the better for us because then we can only move forward if we do that and not like, uh, you know, rest on our laurels, to, so to speak, or <clears throat> just stay on, uh, you know, in place, you know, and this is, I, I think, very important. Well, I think the yeah. concern, too, for yeah. all of us have worked really hard to make this university a Hawaiian place of yes. learning and yeah. to invite our community and yeah. to work with our community right. and to gain the trust of our community, which has not been easy because mm. they've been, um, you know, betrayed so mm. much by the state government. And so this, all our work stands at risk mm -hmm. because this is, this is, 
you know, will drive a, a wedge between our university and the community and that we serve. Yeah. It'll, you know, it might ultimately be reflected in uh, attendance at the yeah, university, yeah, yeah. which they're yeah. very concerned yeah. about. Yeah. And how can we say, oh, we invite you, but at the same time, you know, it, in essence, it, it's like declaring civil war in our community by yeah. uh, allowing the yeah. governor to call out the National Guard in yeah. order to yeah. support the TMC. Uh, I think if they do that, <coughs> they would be uh, like not too smart in terms of politics and, uh, you know, social movements and political movements and where m they might lead. If they are concerned about tourism and this and that and the other, I mean, that instability that it might create, you know, in terms of social motion, et cetera, that would not be good for those guys who are so unwise to do that which they are doing now. It's, that's, you know, my, my point uh, on that, yeah. I do think, like, so can, yeah, I agree. Like, what we were both saying is so important that, um, that um, the university can say for the safety and welfare of students, the TMT cannot proceed. The governor can say for the safety and welfare of citizens, the TMT cannot proceed. Are they worried about a lawsuit? Because if they are, they're paying an awful lot of money for law enforcement and for all these operations yeah. that you know could go to a lawsuit if that's what they're afraid of. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but you know they think that the majority of the people in Hawaii are for the TMT, but <coughs> in doing so they f uh, they do not understand the dynamics, mm -hmm. you know, social dynamics in this whole thing, and that uh, relates to my previous mm -hmm. point. But I don't want to okay. um, dominate this uh, conversation on this point. The other thing I think, and my question is, some people say, well, <coughs> there are other struggles. Why don't you go to other struggles? Uh, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, whether it's land desecrated on the big island uh, by the military uh, and has been going for you know, decades, etc. And why aren't you there, you know, for instance? Or why aren't you... Um <coughs> You know, somewhere else, you know, on Oahu, for instance, or anywhere. I mean, there are multiple struggles. So that's one. The other thing is that uh, people say, well, the Hawaiians participated in um, having the, T uh, not the TMT, but the other, um, you know, telescopes go there. You know, OHA is implicated in one way or another. I don't know, but I'm saying that's what people say. So probably you know more about that kind of stuff in terms of OHA. Was OHA ever implicated in, like, uh, you know, signing off on having the telescope? I mean, one of those 13 or two of them or whatever. Is there any truth to that uh, kind of accusation? I, I'm not really yeah. sure. I, I know that I was involved with the cultural impact study for the, when they wanted to do the outriggers mm. for the one of the telescopes. And mm. it was very clear that, you know, I mean, I, OHA had recommended against it. And the culture, all of the people interviewed said it shouldn't be constructed. Even this cultural impact study for the TMT all said, all of the people, Kupuna, they interviewed, and the cultural impact study said it shouldn't be constructed, and they mm -hmm. just simply ignored it. Then it might be a false uh, accusation. Yeah, but I, yeah. it might be the, the misconstruction. Because it's government land, 20% of the revenues should go to Office of Hawaiian Affairs. So there might be some revenue that's yeah. been turned over to OHA from that. I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. And so maybe that might be a thread that connects yeah. it. But OHA is very clear at this point. Yeah. Well, they're very clear that the university has to manage the, it properly. Yeah. They're split on the board in terms of uh, the TMTs. Not everybody on OHA board is against it. Yeah. Um, but uh, they took the position that you know, they they filed the lawsuit that they the university has to be held responsible for for managing the land properly. Uh, uh, so that that uh, land on Big Island, Pohakoloa, you know, for instance, have been there for so many years, desecrated by the military. So some people say, why aren't you there, for instance? No, they just won a big suit. The, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it was a big suit that was filed. Right. By, you see, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah, yeah, there. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they have been there for a long while, yeah. but. My point is that there are certain accusations, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that need to be answered and educate the people who are for the, uh, you know, right. AI, uh, about this so they can counter them. I know this from my own indigenous struggle, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they tell you all kinds of BS, you know, and then you have to deal with it and forget, put your energy there. So, you know what I'm saying? So you got to educate the population yeah, uh, on that uh, situation. We have uh, still like, I think, five uh, minutes, uh, four minutes uh, 
Um, anything else uh, you might want to, like, uh, in terms of how do you see the uh, future struggle? I mean, the future, like it is now. I mean, the next week, month, six months from now, two years, because the question is two years or something, I, I hear. So uh, how do you see that AI developing uh, from the mountain to, um, you know, the next six months, year, and so on? Anyway, you wanna? Um, sure, the, I mean, I think what we really have seen is this uh, critical resurgence of, of AI among all those who have connected in the Mauna in, in the different ways, which has, going back to your earlier point, also built on and connected to other ongoing struggles mm -hmm. and previous struggles. Mm -hmm. I think there is a challenge there to, to make sure that those are, are still kept in view um, as, as so much energy is being put into the Mauna. Um, as you gain more allies and, and people who have dedicated themselves to Aloha Aina to, mm -hmm. to make sure that they're also able to, to connect with those ongoing struggles. And um, you've seen that happen, and mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. been a, a real important development. Mm -hmm. um, with regard to the Mauna Kea, and specifically the TMT, um, you know, the, the, the Aloha Aina are, are firm in their kapu aloha, mm -hmm. and they're going to be there until they're, they're taken off by mm -hmm. force, mm -hmm. and that will propel a new phase, I think, mm -hmm. of the movement. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's only going to grow, really, mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. um, because the state, you know, when they'll go and take a buzzsaw to a Hawaiian flag or <laughs> arrest 38 kupuna, I mean, they're, they're, they're really pushing this more and, and leading people to, to come together in, in, a, in a stronger, uh, more steadfast commitment to, to mm -hmm. land and to really, as you say, kind of see the, the kind of workings of capital against the people, against the land. Yeah. Um, just this occurred to me just now, like, w what about um, education? We have two minutes, like educating uh, the students, our students, um, like having a, <coughs> a cross-listed course between like ethnic studies and political science. So, uh, we can call it uh, Mauna Kea Ea or whatever <laughs> it might be. And educating, because uh, this would be, uh, I mean, fascinating. Why don't we do that? Uh, any ideas, since you're the chair of policy? You want to do it? We can yeah. make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, uh, it's important. Yeah, I think this, yeah. is, this, this has been pr a training ground yeah. for the next generation. Yeah, the yeah. next generation has been, as you say, yeah. being educated, mm. but they haven't had to be on the front lines. Yeah. Right. And this is really training mm. in front lines yeah. and taking leadership. Yeah, yeah. And they've really stepped forward. Mm. And it's, you know, everybody, those of us in the other generations, so happy that mm. now a new generation is actually stepping forward, mm. taking the lead, yeah. and, and being trained in, yeah, yeah. in leadership yeah. at, at a very historic yeah. moment. Right. We I have, just want yeah, yeah, to sure. interject really quickly mm -hmm. that um, on that point, uh, many of the students have taken really important leadership roles in here at the university, have been conducting the, the ceremonies at the Ahu on Wise Mon, Wise Field mm -hmm. in front of Bachman, mm -hmm. where they've also organized an occupation, which has also involved the, the holding of these free community-based classes modeled after Pu'uhonua and the mm -hmm. university there, University of Pu'uhuluhulu. So the, the, the new forms of, of education based in the Aina and collaborative across disciplines is going on now and mm -hmm. would really encourage everyone to go down to Bachman, to go to WISE and, mm -hmm. and participate in what's happening. Yeah. <clears throat> so now you two have uh, another charge. I know you don't have much to, to, uh, to work <laughs> on, <laughs> which is <coughs> this cross-listed course. Anyway, we um, are flat out of time. Thank you very much all for coming over and sharing. Perhaps we can do uh, another one because uh, about a year and a half ago, we did one on the TMT here. Yeah, so uh, we can do uh, more as things uh, develop. Uh, so thank you very much and uh, mahalo nu aloha. Aloha, see you next month. Mm -hmm.